Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Park. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out AirVPN. Now this is definitely a smaller VPN, but it's got its own user base. On paper, it sounds really good. It's got an open source client. Um, it's based in Italy, I guess, which I mean is kind of unique. Um, it's also very cheap. Um, they have forums. I guess that's kind of what differentiates them. Um, and they have port forwarding. It's one of the few VPNs that do. But there are still other VPNs, in my opinion, that offer overall better stuff and still have port forwarding, uh, namely something like TorGuard or maybe even Hi.me. But in this video, we're going to be checking out to see if it's worth the recent hype. Now, what do I mean by recent hype? Well, VPN Torrents is a somewhat big uh, torrent community on Reddit, and they've recently switched from Movad. Um, they always liked Movad because it was like it had port forwarding. It was open source, it was cheap, so they liked Movad. Movad removed port forwarding. So then everyone moved to iVPN. And then iVPN, since it kind of copies Movad and everything it does, they also removed port forwarding, probably because the same people that were maybe hosting child porn on Movad moved to iVPN and iVPN had to close that down too. So then everybody moved to AirVPN now and AirVPN is flavor of the month. But is it really that good? You can see pretty much, there's like five or six people who go on the subreddit here they spend all day on Reddit and they tell people to use AirVPN now. Meanwhile, if you do like a different VPN uh, besides the cult following of AirVPN, um, you're going to get downvoted uh, just like this guy. This guy likes TorGuard and he got downvoted three times. And this guy's saying, why do mentions of TorGuard always receive downvotes? Um, and then circle jerk here for AirVPN, TorGuard has static ports and 10G servers. Um, and this guy thinks it's because it's based in the US. Now, people on this subreddit are always liking to say that everyone who likes TorGuard is an alt of mine. Uh, they think I have hundreds and hundreds of alts, um, but we could go ahead and look at this guy's account. It's a mature account. We need to log in. Um, this guy likes to look at horror communities, piracy. Uh, he has 102k karma. Uh, and yeah, this guy is probably the same. So yeah, I don't think these are my alts. But that's not also to say that people don't spend a lot of time smearing other VPNs outside of AirVPN on this subreddit. Um, you can see all sorts of weird things going on. This guy was saying TorGuard is a security risk and he posted this thing. And then TorGuard also came out on this post to say this is a fault claim and was entirely made up. Um, and they were kind of critiquing this subreddit for spreading misinformation. Um, and this got um, 17 upvotes even though it was complete BS. Um, they say to use AirVPN because it uses port forwarding and it's one of the few VPNs that does have port forwarding and they want to optimize speeds. But is it really worth it? That's what we're going to be discussing in this video. So I've downloaded AirVPN. Now I used to like AirVPN a lot back in the day. In fact, it was one of my top rated VPN providers, but since then they really haven't done too much to the product. Now, honestly, to me, I was like pretty confused on what AirVPN has been up to. Um, they do have a pretty good forum community and I went to see like um, the news and announcements section. Um, from what I could find, it's mostly just them rolling out some new servers. Um, but that said, as you'll see later on in the video, I'm still not getting the best speeds. Um, there did seem to be some kind of like big Android update. Um, but outside of that, you know, I still find that there are some core issues with the PC application. It seemed like the desktop beta came out um, and seemed to implement some minor changes. Um, but I don't know. It just seems to me like there are like a lot of updates on these forums. But honestly, the product to me feels exactly uh, the same. So it seems like the latest update was in June uh, 223. And then if we kind of keep going on down the list, um, we see an update uh, maybe around uh, last year. So it seems like they have some minor updates every year. So they said at this point they did complete integration of WireGuard um, with AirVPN, but still I am running into issues as I'll show you later on. It's also worth noting AirVPN is one of the few applications out there not to have an actual official application for VPN, um, which is definitely a bit odd. Almost every single other VPN does this. Um, they claim it's because the Apple policy states that Apple can process um, and apps can bypass the tunnel at will um, because Apple Store policy causes issues. 
Um, this did seem to be kind of like an issue uh, with that. And there was some updates about that with VPNs. However, some of my research has shown that this could have just been an issue with specifically iOS 16.1 and resolving with uh, existing connections. Um, so if you did close uh, down your connections, um, and then connect your VPN. It should have been an issue. And this guy would suggest at the time to toggle airplane mode and toggle it back off. Um, some people were spe speculating this wasn't necessarily uh, malicious uh, behavior. Um, and that was definitely something Apple could have done better. But at the same time, this wasn't an issue, um, you know, for years um, before this. this. This was just like last year. And AirVPN still didn't have an app for years before that. And if you go back to the web archive of around 2017, you could see that they didn't have any information about this at the time. They just said to use OpenVPN, probably because they didn't really want to develop an application, or they didn't find it worth their resources, or whatever their reason is, you know, it, they never, just never really had an app. So I, I don't think they always were like telling people not that's the reason why. So I definitely think uh, that's something to think about too. A lot of other VPN companies are kind of innovating and doing different things, um, developing different applications, developing different bundles. You know, you have something like Proton, they're developing mail, um, drive support. Some of the other VPNs like Nord and Surfshark are developing other products like Incogning, which I really like um, to remove your data from data brokers. But as far as I know, uh, AirVPN, I don't really know what they're developing. I don't really know what they're doing. The VPN is pretty much exactly the same as it was when I first reviewed it, except now it has WireGuard. But in my test, it really hasn't really worked that well. Um, as you can see here, we're going to be trying to use a um, WireGuard protocol. Um, I'm not a huge fan of how hidden this is down here. You barely could see it. Um, but we could go to the protocols. We'll select this protocol here. I tried also selecting um, a different protocol. Depending on which one you work or the server you pick, you might not be able to connect. And I'll show you that right here. All right, so we pick WireGuard here. We pick the US server. And then um, as you can see right here, um, I picked it. it doesn't really show which one I picked, um, but we'll do connect. Wait, connect to recommended, uh, connect to recommended or choose specific server. OK, so you do have to choose a specific server. All right. So I'll double click it and now let's see if it connects. So I had an issue where I could connect the one in Canada, but I couldn't connect to the one in the United States and I wasn't sure why. I came back from doing IRL stuff and we're still not connected. It's still trying to connect, but watch if I select, oh look, it's trying to select a different server actually. Interesting. Um, but let's see here. Another annoying thing is the application is very like connecting and disconnected. It's always doing something. It's like Jesus Christ. Um, but let's watch this. So um, let's pick the Can Canada server. This one, Tita Watson. For some reason it worked here. I don't know why. And as you can see, it was trying to connect to it at the end there. Um, but let's see if this connects. Jesus Christ, finally. See, there we go. I didn't change any protocols. I just changed servers and it worked. Okay. Now, if we look at the speeds there, fine. This is the speeds I got. It's not the best speeds. It's not the worst speeds. Maybe 3.5 to 4 range if I'm feeling generous. Which today, I'm not. Um, because some of the other things just kind of annoy me. Um, the fastest VPNs could get anywhere between like five to 600. This one's going to be capping out around four, as I showed you before. Um, my internet should be around like 700, um, without VPN on, um, right now it's, yeah, 465. So it's not horrible. Um, but I'm not going to get, you know, the best speeds with this VPN, but what are some of the pros on air VPN? You know, why do people like it so much? Well, it is one of the few VPNs out there that 
you know, has pretty good on paper kind of components of its product offering. Now, not every VPN does. Some VPNs want to make more money like Nord or Surfshark or ExpressVPN. Some VPNs like AirVPN um, kind of maximize the privacy component of their um, website as well as the product. So they don't have any cookies on their website, any tracking. You can see that here. And this is going to be similar to something like TorGuard. There's nothing really here. Um, so that's nice. And like I said, it's open source. But what are some of the other things you're missing out on when choosing AirVPN besides the application looking pretty boring, um, having no dark mode, and just in general being pretty buggy? Um, well, you're going to be missing out on a lot of those peripheral things like I was talking about if you're looking for any kind of package deals, um, whether that includes some extra bonuses like some of the VPNs offer nowadays, like Proton, Nord, or Surf. Shark, um, even TorGuard offers some additional components like dedicated IPs and some of those cool features or streaming bundles. Um, but with AirVPN, we're not seeing any streaming compatibility either. It just simply doesn't really work with any of the streaming services, whether that be Netflix, Prime, or anything like that. You're only going to be able to see uh, the originals in your country, or you're not going to be able to watch Prime Video and those kind of things. Additionally, AirVPN is lacking in the live chat compartment. Um, there is no live chat on the website. It's just basic support tickets. Although I do kind of find the team here, the ones that do seem to work here still, uh, you know, they're decently friendly and the foreign community is kind of one of the bonuses of this product. Um, besides that though, AirVPN, um, you know, it is pretty affordable. Like I said, um, three days, it's only a couple of euros, uh, 212, one month, 741. You know, it's a decently priced product, very affordable at $70. It's probably one of the best things about it. But with some other VPNs like TorGuard, I feel like you're getting a really good deal and you get some of the best speeds and stuff like that. You're dealing with a little bit of jank. Um, but with AirVPN, you're dealing with a lot of jank. Um, the application, like I said, it's kind of glitchy. Um, if you want to use the configs, you might have a better experience there. But again, you're going to be losing out some of that extra compatibility of some of those streaming things and stuff like that. Overall, bare bones as possible. This could be an okay VPN, but I just find it's not as competitive as some of the other VPNs. It's not as interesting. Um, you know, it's not as easy to use as something like TorGuard. And that, that kind of shows something because TorGuard, a lot of people who hate on it like to say that it's hard to use. Um, but if TorGuard is easier to use than AirVPN, well, I think that is indicating something. Um, it's not as flashy or as feature rich as some of the newer VPNs out there developing a lot of things, whether you like that or not. Um, you know, it does have port forwarding, but why would you choose AirVPN over something like TorGuard? TorGuard has port forwarding. It's got better speeds. It's actually cheaper or around the same price for three years with promo codes. Um, if you want really good streaming compatibility, you might choose something like Surfer Nord. If you want a VPN that has lots of bundle deals and extra ecosystem things like mail, drive support, you might choose one of those other ones too. I'm just not really sure why I would tell someone to use AirVPN in 2023. Uh, besides the fact on paper, it looks really good, but in reality, it's just kind of buggy and outdated, at least from what I've tested today. Anyways, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you again very soon. Now, guys, whether you like this review or not, make sure to stay tuned to VPNTerialist.com. I'll also putting, put some of my favorite products in the description down below that I like to recommend here on the channel, like Incogni, a data broker removal tool, and make sure to stay up to date with my VPN rankings, like I said, um, on VPNTerialist.com. If you're into cryptocurrency, I also have rated pretty much every single cryptocurrency exchange on Sex Tier List, which you can see in the bottom right. So check that out too if you want to pick one of the best cryptocurrency exchanges with my objective data-driven analysis.